But I'd like to um, urge councillors to take an interest in defibrillators. So this is equipment which can now be used by anybody to help people who are suspected of having a, a heart attack. Now I view this committee as being a little bit like um, a parish council, it's that kind of level of um, local government. And around the country parish councils have been um, getting defibrillators put into um, the, the, their communities, particularly in rural areas. Now I don't know whether scientifically it makes sense to um, follow that kind of practice in the city, but that's why I'm suggesting um, this committee might like to, to find out. And something I'm particularly interested in knowing is if I dial 999, do the operators know where the accessible defibrillators are in central Cambridge? I'm not convinced that um, the ambulance service operators do know the answer to that. They might know, or they do seem to have a database of community access defibrillators, but I don't know whether they, they know where all those education institutions, and sports centres, churches and other bodies are. So I think it would be something that this committee could usefully check and that would just be by uh, writing to the ambulance service, essentially saying, um, can the committee help or what's the current situation? No, I think that's an excellent suggestion. Um, I mean, what I'd be really interested to know, Richard, is how your experience of parish councils, where does the funding come from? And um, I'm aware of defibrillators in sort of community centres and places such as that. Again, I don't know, is it the NHS who issue them or can you enlighten us a little more on that? I don't know, but I'm not particularly suggesting spending public money here. I think you could do a lot just by um, talking to the ambulance service and encouraging them to get information from bodies like the colleges, the university bodies, about where these things are and getting that in front of the, you know, the 999 operators. But you could also, you, you've got um, uh, encouraging people to donate charitably in the papers tonight on rough sleeping. You, the committee could do that in respect of um, defibrillators. Just um, a comment from my experience doing a first aid training course. Uh, I spoke to a guy who was an uh, official rapid responder and he'd carry around a defibrillator in the back of his car, which seems like a, a better way for getting help to people in the city rather than getting them to come to a school which might need someone to unlock it or something like that. So I think the, the mobile defibrillator with the trained user who isn't necessarily at the level of a paramedic, but um, who's able to use the equipment to, to save someone's life potentially. That, that model seems like the right one. But if you like, I'll, I'll follow up and ask the, the ambulance service for more detail and we're able to. for the community, for, for, for other people, um, but uh, we found that um, there wasn't uh, enough evidence to support our Do you want to respond to that? I just thought the aspect of keys, and elsewhere there's a code that's held by the 999 operator, I don't give it to the caller, but other than that then. I'm going to leave your third question and come back to it later, but I'm going to uh, move on to policing and safer neighbourhoods, if that's okay with everybody. Yes? So I did give notice that I would raise a question if that's all right. Yes. I don't think I have any. It's um, okay. Yes, the, the, the issue is uh, Airbnb, air bed and breakfast. Uh, and um, this issue ar arose from a has arisen from a particular case uh, in the local area, but I think has implications for the whole of the city. And the real question is, um, when will the city really consult on having a policy towards Airbnb? Um, there are over about 300 properties in the city uh, let under Airbnb. 
uh, a large proportion of those are whole houses rather than just rooms. In the particular case which uh, uh, has arisen locally is a four-storey family property in a terrace which has been let on Airbnb for over a year. Up to five people coming at any one time. Most of the lets are only one or two um, nights. And the stress and uh, concern to look, people living next door has been very considerable. People have had to move uh, rooms, move bedrooms and so on. The problem is not so much uh, the guests, if you like, having wild parties every night, although that could happen, but simply that the comings and goings at all, all times of day and night uh, is a real issue. Uh, and I think most people here will have read in the press that cities all over the world are actually having a problem with Airbnb. Uh, we have had discussions with uh, the local planning, with the city council here, and uh, there has been a decision by officers that actually this property required is a change of use and a planning permission, planning application will be needed. Uh, but the implications, I think, are much greater uh, because what we have seen uh, everywhere, and I think it must be the case in Cambridge, uh, that there are these properties, uh, some landlords have multiple properties, uh, some of the properties, some uh, existing landlords are evicting tenants in order to move to Airbnb. And the, the impact on local communities is very considerable. Some London boroughs have real problems. There are multiple uh, solutions being tested but everybody is is actually seeking to find a way out and I, I we, we generally think uh, as a residents association this is a combined planning housing and community issue uh, and I know that officers in the city council and the planning department have felt the lack of there being a policy towards Airbnb, Airbnb in the city so I'm raising that as a local issue, but I do think it has uh, much wider implications uh, for the city as a whole. Thank you. Thank you for the question, and would you like to make a comment on that, um, Yeah, it seems, it seems like um, an important thing that yes. policies need to be updated um, when new phenomena like this come along. And um, it, it seems to me a core of planning, planning question. And, um, um, I'm happy to take this one away and, and, and try and establish what is or could be a policy framework um, around uh, Airbnb. Um, and I'll do that at the same time as the Hobson Street um, Cinema as well, with the same thing. Sorry, I've come here for exactly the same reason as this gentleman here. Um, there's a four-storied house opposite me, not the same room, yeah. and it's on Airbnb for 12 people. It's also out on uh, mental four groups of eight. Now, I saw that any house over a certain number, um, for example 12, would have to have some sort of regulation, or it seems to me it's been used as a private hotel. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Really, I'm lacking up this gentleman along here, and I think we need to have some regulations put in very, very quickly. Can I just say, I, mean, I, I understand that um, if it's a whole house that's let through Airbnb, there is actually a 90-day limit on how many days of the year it can be let for, through Airbnb. Of course, the problem is that, well, unless they've actually got planning permission, to use it in that way through the council, which obviously most of these people haven't. Um, and I understand, as you say, this is a national, or well, probably an international problem. Um, and Airbnb, there is now quite a lot of pressure on them to deal with it. And from what I've heard, I understand that they are proposing, because obviously it would be relatively easy for them on their side to see if the house has been left for more than 90 days, that they require to see the certificate um, allowing use throughout the year. Um, and I understand that is about to happen, and I'm sure that it would be really helpful 
if um, Cambridge, you know, councillors from Cambridge could support that happening, because obviously it would be the easiest way to deal with it, to deal with it through the Airbnb site, rather than <coughs> local authorities having to each make their own rules and planning departments deal with it. I mean, thanks, which I think we've talked about this over about 18 months ago, and it's essentially we have to give permission to guest houses, and if they are if they are operating as guest houses, then I suppose there's there's actually an enforcement issue. But it's rather like us dealing with houses in multiple occupation. The city council now has. Um, has, has policies on houses and multiple exchange, and we have regulations and expectations and um, it sounds as if Airbnb is something similar but it is very much up to residents and it's a very difficult one to, to mention it to the city council and then we have to put in place um, the process where they start registering as guest houses and get an operating license. I mean it's a similar problem we're beginning to face with Uber taxis, which are unlicensed vehicles, and of course, um, I mean, we have a whole licensing committee issuing, sorry, issuing taxi, I mean, we do, we issue taxi licenses. Sorry, Tim, shaking your head. Um, but Uber BNB, I, I see Uber taxis as a similar development that also needs um, almost a national regulation yes. for local councils to implement. Yes. I think, sorry, I, I think that's, that's the point really, that there are a number of alternatives. The 90-day limit it yeah. does apply in London, yeah. uh, but it's, it's uh, ignored on uh, yeah. a very widespread. So enforcement is the Sim simply because the enforcement, there is a real enforcement problem. Yes. Airbnb internationally are co trying to cope with some of these issues. Yeah but the ability of a web-based site to, uh, if you like, monitor and enforce across the piece is very, very difficult. So I think both local authorities and Airbnb, uh, in a sense, are faced with uh, pretty intractable issues, but they can be uh, very serious locally and changing the whole nature of communities. Uh, and I think Cambridge must be one of the prime spots wherever there's a tourist interest. Well, I think we've now got two major issues to do research on and several issues to do quite a lot of follow-up. So, if I may, I'll now ask the um, police representatives to do their report. Would you like to come here? Yeah, I'm going to move out of the way of the speaker.